I have a bicycle. I have a bicycle. Hello consumers of online entertainment and value. Welcome to another installment of How Weird Can I Possibly Be? You're welcome for not giving you the stereotypical YouTube intro to a video. Uh, if you're new and you want to get caught up on what's going on over here, up above, right there, there's a link you can click on it. It'll fill you in. Look, it looks like a pickup truck. Today's objective has to do with more power. Because I know most of you are wondering if I was going to make more power with a standalone ECU. And I'm going to, because of the help of ethanol content sensor. Flex fuel. Yay! They include all kinds of pins and plugs. Factory. Love that. Also, I spent the past two days getting over a sinus infection and just doing nothing but wiring. Hmm. Sure, this is going to be good for my sinuses. These need to be clean for flex fuel. You'll see why. And a couple of minutes later, they looked like this. The green zinc coating that was on these was scratched and peeling off in so many areas, I just, I couldn't save them. So I stripped them. Considering those things were originally zinc coated green, my car's red, I don't think that's gonna look very good. So I used some epoxy paint because the stuff has not let me down so far. It's pretty durable stuff. Whilst that stuff dries, you're probably getting kind of confused now what the hell is going on. At first I started talking about flex fuel, now I'm painting brackets. I got a method to, no I don't. I have to make sure it's nice and clean down here before I start installing parts because that's just what I do. Well, this is gross down in this spot. It's really gross down in here. That already looks so much better. Oh, and just like that, it's magically assembled and coated. It's so much easier if I don't film my work. You don't need to see what's going on inside my bathtub of shame. Just know that car parts are being assembled. Just like that. Yeah. I wanna order a new bushing for this lateral link right here. What do I do with the hardware for that? Of course I'm not gonna put the old hardware back in there. I got brand new stuff. Brand new Toyota Bolts. Fresh, fresh, fresh. This right here is the finishing touch. I had this powder coated and this is actually the bracket that holds the factory air box in, but it also serves as a nice little cover for the engine mount over here. It's a nice blend between the just regular matte black and then the texture over here brings everything together in the engine bay. Damn, that looks good. I like it. I'm gonna go with underneath the coolant neck. That looks like a good spot for it. Ow, my hair! Yeah. I actually think that will work right there. Uh, what I could do is there's a ground directly below it. My glove farted. I could just make a, a spacer and drop a long bowl all the way through and then it would bolted on both holes. That's what I'll probably do if I want to get super OCD with this. And these right here are going in the trash because I'm using ANN-6. This just does not look safe. Like this is so old and janky. Now does it make sense why I'm doing this to this car? Because the wiring, the fuel lines, all this stuff is just old. I gotta do something about this fan wiring. That's bothering me. Let's do something about that now. I hope somebody appreciates the effort that went into this wiring for my cooling fans for the engine lid and the intercooler because I, I, need a, I need a better hobbies. I don't even know if it's worth it anymore to be able to brag and say you built your project car all yourself. I'd rather be one of those people that just pay someone else to do it. At least they get to sit on a beach. I get to sit in a trunk with mosquitoes biting my ass cheeks. Want food? It's open. <laughs> She's a snack. <laughs> I got something. This came in the mail yesterday while I was here. 
I needed this. I AT sensor. It looks like a miniature torch. That's it. That was the final sensor for the intake manifold that had to wire up. I just gotta supply some 12 volts to my injectors and those are all wired up. And then these guys over here, I gotta add a wire coming from another loom and then make a universal ground to go to a ground point since these things do not use the uh, feedback. I haven't wired up the cam trigger yet because this thing is a little tricky. So it's a three wire system. If you look right here, Hall proximity sensors. So I have a trigger and a sensor ground, and then it's gonna require a power source that is a varying DC input. And that's what I have to determine. GS 10701. Oh, cool. 4.5 to 24 volt DC input. So I have a wide range that I can send from the ECU. And because this is a Hall effect sensor, it needs to be a twisted pair. That's why the rest of the wiring is shielded. I would rather have a braided pair than a twisted pair. Just cause it looks cute. Twisted pair. I like that they have different colors that kind of work together. Brown is my power. Blue is ground, black is output. So blue is ground. That's so weird. Why would blue be ground? Blue is ground. And because I'm fancy, I'm actually going to put it on a little plug so I can remove it when I'm doing maintenance. It just makes more sense to do this. This is kind of tricky. Not a lot of room to work down inside here. I just added this red wire here with the white stripe. This one is a eight volt source coming from the ECU it's a regulated 8 volt source jeez I look like a sasquatch in the wide angle that's crazy I'm so tall I'm not this tall I'm this tall in real life oh I hate doing this hey that's where that went I knew I lost that thing The crank sensor is gonna go on the, come out of there. Pancake fucker. Why? I gotta take off this back wheel because the crank trigger is located on the crank. That's why it's called a crank trigger. And the crank is behind this wheel. There's a crank pulley. Check that out. You like that? That's special effects right there. I only provide you with the best in my YouTube videos. That's camera art. Anyway, this is the crank trigger. It goes on the crank pulley. And these little teeth spin. And then the magnetic pickup, I mean, Hall effect sensor, sits and it... This is nice. It looks like a beer koozie for a robot dad. It didn't tell me to, but I'm putting Loctite on these bolts anyway, just because they're gonna be spinning on the crank pulley, and that just makes sense in my mind. Uh, torque these to 33 pound-feet. My cruiser weighs 1,200 kilograms. Yeah, that feels like it's gonna strip if I go any harder, so let's not do that. All right. Tight, 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 tight. I know those are gonna have a torque spec. I just don't know what. Hello. So now I gotta also mount the Hall effect sensor for the crank trigger. It has a little a uh, robot nipple that the sensor goes through and this attaches to the side of the block. Robot nipple. I'd be really mad if I start an oil leak because of this. Hello, welcome to the next day. I have a bicycle. I have a bicycle. 
I know this is an MR2 video, but this is a special moment because it's time to do the finishing touches on my vintage GT Performer restoration. I'll show you the whole bike in a second, but I gotta put the correct graphics back on the bike since I had it powder coated. This is so fun. So if you guys didn't see a video I had a couple weeks ago, uh, my business partner Fred next door acquired this GT bike from a guy named Metal Magic Mike. <laughs> and they actually made, oh, does it go that way? Or is it, I gotta look which way it goes. I'm gonna put a link on the top of the screen and I'll probably put it in the video description below of the guys next door's YouTube channel and they made a vlog where they went to acquire this bike and they also made a full restoration video. That one's not out yet, but ooh, it looks so good. Oh, it ties everything together nicely. Oh man, I love the way this powder coating came out. Like it literally matches so perfect to the factory color of this bike. I think that works. Oh, it's textured. Oh, I like that. Just like that. This one is going to be hard because it wraps around the top and the sides of the tube. I don't want to screw this up. I think I literally got to sit on it. Oh, this is so tricky. No, no, no. Gonna come over. Like that. I really hope I don't get an air bubble in this. I'm gonna be super pissed. Are you happy with how your child turned out? I'm so proud. Your bike child, is that what your vision was? Yup. I think it came out just right. Hmm. You're right about the tires. I like the tires. Since pretty much all I know is the color scheme, and just looking up vintage 1980s GT bikes. Actually, I have a GT mountain bike. That's kind of weird, and it's white. Uh, Fred was the brainchild behind the actual parts that went into this, so Fred, you explain it. I'm not awake enough for this. <laughs> um, we just kind of spiced it up with some new school stuff, so like frame fork, bar stem, and like seat and everything is, well, seat posts is all still like true to the original GT stuff. Uh, we went with the Colt Vans tires in that cream kind of off-white just to kind of like set it off a little bit. And then the pink and blue theme, we kind of carried it around it with the ODI grips and the Odyssey pedals. And I just thought it would look dope with like some modern three-piece cranks on it. So we got some profiles. It's the best name in the game. That's pretty much it. Everything else is all still well, I guess we got the Skyways on there too. Because mm -hmm. we got rid of those ugly, whatever those were. You threw those away, huh? I threw them in the trash. Yeah, those were terrible. <laughs> so there you go. There is my new old GT Performer BMX bike. I fell in love with this when those guys got it just because, I mean, it's as old as I am. And I don't know, I just wanted it. They were going to flip it and sell it. And I was like, no, I will buy it from you. So. Fred and I got together, went online, and we looked at different parts, kind of came up with a color theme for it. And since he knows BMX because he rides BMX, he suggested the type of parts that I went with. Uh, the Skyway mags, that was like 100% a must have. I was like, dude, I'm putting mags on this thing no matter what. I wanted to do the original GT tires at first, but Fred suggested going with this new school wider tire and just doing kind of like, I don't know, like a, a resto mod on this bike. So I'm so happy with how it turned out. And uh, Elgin Iron is the one that did the powder coating. They're the one that powder coated stuff for the MR2. And speaking of the MR2, as you're watching this, I'm already working on this thing, doing wiring stuff so I can get more progress done on this car. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of BMX content slid into here. It's a way for me to tie in their channel next door. So now you guys can go and check out the next video they're gonna put up is the actual restoration process of this bike. So I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.